Greetings, Earthlings and gamers. Today I'm back with a review of a brand new microphone from HyperX. So today we're looking at this guy, the HyperX Quadcast, which is a USB multi-pattern condenser microphone. If you do want to pick this microphone up, it will set you back around $140. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. Also, for the majority of this review, I will have the microphone connected directly to my Mac with the input gain on my computer set at 75% and the gain on the microphone set to the first dot. I won't do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. That was a sleeve. First off, you will get the microphone. It comes with a shock mount that is pre-installed. It also comes with a desktop stand already installed. If you want to remove the desktop stand, it does come with a mount to put this on a proper microphone stand. You get a USB cable and some documentation. Then as far as the build quality, it doesn't feel amazing or even that good, but it feels fine. It does have an all metal body, but the metal feels incredibly light and a little bit cheap. The shock mount is attached with these screws, so it would be a pain to remove it. The bottom of the microphone is where you'll find the gain control to adjust the microphone's recording level. The top of the microphone has a big mute button and it becomes apparent when the microphone is muted because the red LED inside turns off. For example, then when the light comes back on, you know your microphone is hot again. And finally, on the back of the microphone, you will find the USB port to connect this to your computer, as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which does offer latency-free monitoring, but there's no way to turn it off or even adjust the level that you're monitoring the microphone. Then as far as the specs, this thing has a stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bidirectional polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 36 decibels, a bit depth of 16 bit and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz. Okay, prior to this moment, I have been using the cardioid polar pattern on the microphone, but now let's cycle through all the polar patterns to see how they sound. Now I am speaking into the stereo polar pattern, and as I move around the microphone, you should hear me moving from your left to your right hand speaker or vice versa, but regardless, this is how it sounds. Now I'm on the omnidirectional polar pattern and the frequency response and sound should remain consistent as I move all the way around the microphone as an omnidirectional microphone does. Now I'm back on the cardioid polar pattern and this is how it sounds. And just a quick note for the majority of gamers and streamers, this is the polar pattern you should be using. You should avoid the stereo, the omnidirectional and the bidirectional like they're the plague, especially if you are just a solo streamer. And finally, I am on the bi-directional polar pattern, which picks up audio in the front and in the back, and it has some pretty dead areas on the side. So if you were interviewing somebody at a table and they were sitting across from you, this is the polar pattern you would want. Still on the cardioid polar pattern, banging on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I've put the microphone back on the provided desktop stand and I will place it directly in front of me, maybe a foot and a half away from my mouth. First, I will go ahead and bump my desk to show you how well this does at rejecting that kind of noise. But then I will go ahead and type on my keyboard with Cherry MX Blues again to show you why you wouldn't want to do this because it just picks up too much keyboard noise if you're typing. Now I'm right on top of the quadcast on the cardioid polar pattern to demonstrate the proximity effect of this thing. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am back on the cardioid polar pattern and let's go ahead and test the plosives. So please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Hmm. Now you can see my sound preferences opened up in Logic Pro and this microphone only records at 48 kilohertz. So with that sample rate and an IO buffer size of 128 samples, we have a resulting round trip latency of 12 and a half milliseconds or five milliseconds output. If we drop it down to 64, we have nine and a half milliseconds round trip or three and a half milliseconds output. And if we jump up to 256 samples, 18 milliseconds round trip or eight milliseconds output. 
Okay, now I have the gain on my computer set to 75%, and I will decrease the gain on the microphone to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise this microphone's preamp generates. Zero percent. First dot. Second dot. Third dot. Now I have the gain on the HyperX Quadcast set to the fifth dot, so probably around 75%. I will now go ahead and adjust the gain on my computer to see if we can get a better noise floor out of this mic. Twenty five percent. Fifty percent. Seventy five percent. And one hundred percent. Okay, now I have the HyperX Quadcast connected directly to a Windows 10 PC, still on the cardioid polar pattern. The computer's input gain is set at 73%, and the input gain on the microphone is still set to the very first dot, and this is how the audio sounds. <laughs> they do it again there's only one way to tell my friends we will test out the mic and we will tell Cheryl to get a life seriously you don't shoot guns at people's apartments you stupid bitch. knock it off Okay, for the outro, I will have the microphone sat on my desk directly in front of me, and I will start by saying, what a shocker. Another gaming company has made a microphone completely ripping off the Blue Yeti. But first up, in terms of pros, I really like the fact that there's a physical gain dial on the microphone. That's always something that I'm looking for. I also like the big mute button on this thing and the LED light to indicate when you're muted or when you're hot. And I also think it did a pretty decent job at rejecting background noise. And then in terms of cons, the microphone was pretty dang bad at rejecting plosives. There's also no way to shut off the zero latency monitoring or adjust the zero latency monitoring level but also when you have the microphone on the actual stand adapter I found that the ports were very poorly placed there's just not enough room between the microphone and the adapter to keep the cables from getting crunched or have some unnecessary pressure on them which makes me worry about the longevity of those ports but now what are my overall thoughts for music I don't think the performance on any of the polar patterns justifies the price. So if you are looking at this microphone for music, I would suggest you look somewhere else. I just don't think this is cut out for that application. And then for spoken word, the way that I would describe this is unoffensive. Nothing really popped out and bothered me in terms of the frequency response. It's just there. I will say though, it does seem to lack a little bit of body in the low end and may come across as a little bit thin if you're farther away from the microphone. And finally, would I recommend this microphone? Kind of, I guess, it's fine. I'm just so sick and tired of these companies releasing gaming and streaming microphones that have four polar patterns. 
Why are you doing this? It makes zero sense. For 99% of streamers, the only polar pattern they're going to need in a microphone is cardioid. So I think the majority of streamers should look for a microphone that is just cardioid and it does cardioid very well, rather than a microphone that has four polar patterns, three of which you will not use, that are just meh. But if you are someone who's searching for a somewhat decent looking microphone with four polar patterns that you probably won't use, then sure, I guess I would recommend it because it's perfectly middle of the road, it's unoffensive, and I think you'll be perfectly happy with it. But before all you gamers and streamers decide to pick this microphone up, let me just pose a question to you. Do you really need four polar patterns? Are you really going to use them? Or is that just a neat selling point that makes you want this microphone? If you aren't going to be using ARF, all, our, our full? <laughs> All four polar patterns, maybe you should look into something that is a cardioid dynamic microphone or a cardioid condenser microphone that does that one polar pattern a lot better than this mic. All right, guys, well, that is going to do it for today. So if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe by clicking that logo down beneath me. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to hang out in the Discord server and have some chats about microphones, audio gear, or anything, I will throw a link in the description. And I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.